So the results are in and I have some information on the benefits of installing an SSD onto your Xbox One X. This is a follow-up video to the previous Xbox One X SSD drive install video, which you can see that here. So if you haven't seen that already, do check that out first. That is, I mean, obviously it's not like a sequel to a movie. You don't need that to know what's going on here, but it kind of, you know, tells the whole story if you see that. So do check that out first if you're so inclined. So I actually had the information on the drive tests for quite a while now, but I wanted to make sure that it was stable. So I spent past, uh, I think it's been a couple months now, playing on my Xbox, just, you know, playing games, loading them up, installing, just to make sure that it all works and that there was no issues. Like, and since then a few updates have installed and I've had no signs of any trouble, so now I can confidently say that it was a successful installation and I can share with you the results from my drive testing. So I tested the console itself, startup times, as well as a handful of games. Uh, as far as the games were concerned, it consisted of basically going from the startup screen and getting all the way to where gameplay begins. With all the tests, I did three passes, each with the original HDD, and then with the new internal SSD, as well as with an external SSD. And I used the external SSD as kind of a secondary test, showing that it is more the drive that matters than the way it is connected. There is a difference in speed between USB 3 and SATA, but none of the drives being tested were nearly fast enough for that to be a factor. And this test is just to kind of show that. And now on to the results. Now, given that you can't run a system off of it, obviously the external SSD was omitted for this test. With the SSD, startup was reduced by about 30%, going from just over a minute to just under a minute. Uh, the one thing I can say is a major difference that I noticed right off the bat is that there is no drive noise with the SSD. So that is kind of a, an extra benefit from the solid state installation. If there is an argument for it, this is one area where installing the solid state would be more beneficial than the external is startup benefits. Because obviously you can't start from an external SSD, so you would have to install one in order to benefit from that. GTA 5, this one was the most straightforward. It's the only one that went straight from game select to gameplay without any additional button pushes necessary. Now, if you so chose, you could hit a button to go to online play, but if you don't do anything, it just goes straight into the game. Incidentally, it was also the biggest difference cutting the load time nearly in half from a minute 48 to a minute flat. With the remaining games tested, there is a sectional loading to them where you select the game, it goes into a splash screen, you press A on that screen, it goes into like probably a map select or a game type select, and then from there it'll go into the game itself. So in these game tests, there's actually a three sectional result. I only depicted the results as the total time measured, although the graph does show those each individual sections in separate colors. In Fallout, the load time went from a minute 55 for the total load to a minute and 15, so a gain of 40 seconds or a time savings of 35%. PUBG had a similar result, a minute 47 down to a minute and nine roughly also a 35% time savings. Now Far Cry was by far the longest load time of all the games tested, and it also happened to be the smallest time savings when switching to the SSD. It went from two minutes, 46 seconds, down to two minutes and 10 seconds, which results in a 22% time gain. Although, if you compare just the last section, the savings is relatively much larger. As you can see is indicative of all the tests, the SSD internally is nearly identical to the external SSD, which backs up the theory that the SSD is faster and it doesn't matter if it is internal or external. In performing the tests like this, uh, the one thing I did notice is there were certain sections of some, if not all, the games 
that were completely unaffected by drive times, having almost the exact same load times with each one. This is something, you know, new to me. This is something I'm learning is that, you know, there are some sections that load certain things, so some of them don't necessarily come from the drive. I'll have to look into that further because this is new information for me. So I am, I am learning as much as you are. Okay, so at the end of the day, what should be our takeaway from this? I think, one, that a solid state drive is beneficial if you want faster load times on your games. Two, that you don't necessarily have to install it. So if you're just looking for faster load times, all you have to do is get an external solid state drive, you plug it into your Xbox, and you're good to go. And if you're like me and you enjoy cracking things open and working on them, see how they work and everything, this is a perfect thing to do for that. It's not that difficult. There's a bit of work involved replacing the information on the drives, but besides that, it's, it's just a lot of fun just being able to open it up and put in a new piece of hardware. If you are the type of person that likes doing that, I would say absolutely go this route. If you're not, I would say just go for the external SSD that should be more than suitable for your needs. All right, well, I do appreciate you tuning in and checking out this video, and I hope it was as informative for you as it was fun for me to make. As with all videos, if you liked it, let me know, and if you didn't, let me know. And if you're so inclined, do hit subscribe and that bell for notifications on all future RNG releases and streams. Until the next video, I will see you guys later.